there's a, a bit of a pressure among journalists, among researchers, among our universities to publicize the work that we're doing, uh, get the word out about individual studies that researchers have done. The problem with that is any one study is just a small piece of the bigger picture of all of the um, components that go together to help us decrease risk of cancer. So when you see any one study out of context with all of the other puzzle pieces, it can be hard to make sense of things. Sometimes a study will find one finding in a certain population. Researchers might study a different population or study things a little bit differently and get a different result. We can make sense of that when we look at all of the pieces together. The research that we do around diet, physical activity, and body composition is actually much more challenging to do than uh, people realize. We eat a varied diet. Um, we don't eat the same thing often from day to day or meal to meal. And it, it can be hard to accurately assess what a person eats, how much physical activity they do, and even what effect their body composition um, plays in terms of cancer risk cancer treatment outcomes, and then cancer survivorship. And so while the big picture may not be changing very often, yes, we know it's good to eat a diet that gives you all of the vitamins and minerals you need, um, not too high in, in saturated and trans fats and sodium and alcohol. Getting regular physical activity is good for health maintaining a healthy body weight. Yes, all of those things consistently are associated with a lower risk of cancer, but what we don't understand is the how, the who, the what of why all of these things are important for cancer prevention. And that's really where researchers are right now, trying to understand how much we need of certain nutrients. Uh, how much physical activity we need, what is the optimal body composition for the best outcomes, preventing cancer or when people are going through treatment. We know that when people are going through cancer treatment, there's a huge variation in response to many of the cancer treatments. Some people do very well. We're able to really reduce the cancer burden, hopefully um, get them through the process and on to a normal, healthy life. Other people don't have such good success. And we're starting to appreciate that some of these lifestyle factors may play a role in how people do during cancer treatment. Same sort of thing with cancer prevention. Some people will never develop cancer in their life, and why is that? Uh, other people may, may do all, all of these things, or many of these things, yet still be at higher risk for cancer. How can we understand that better? and tailor recommendations to the individual. That's really the next step of what we're trying to understand. But the research that we do around diet, physical activity, body composition that's so nicely summarized in these expert reports gives us a lot of very important clues to the potential underlying biology of what's happening. And yes, we work very closely with our basic science colleagues in, who are working in the laboratory setting and our clinical colleagues who are working with uh, people uh, in the clinics. Uh, and it's a collaborative uh, relationship to better understand all of these relationships. It is very hard for even professionals who work in the field to keep track of all of the latest studies. And that's part of the reason that these expert reports and the continuous update projects are so useful and so valuable. Researchers from around the world have done the job of looking at the entirety of the scientific research and putting it together for us, putting all of those pieces of the puzzle together in a way that we can use it. Mm -hmm.